I'm joined now by the UKIP MEP Nigel Farage and by the former Europe Minister Baroness Quinn, who knows Baroness Ashton. Baroness Quinn, uh, she's undoubtedly a woman of qualities, but does it worry that, she, that she's never been elected to any elected office ever? Um, uh, it's rather difficult because of technical reasons to hear your question, but I think you were asking about the fact that she hadn't been elected. Um, obviously, for this position, having occupied an elected role is not a precondition. But I think that those of us who worked with Cathy Ashton in the House of Lords and saw the very skillful way in which she piloted through the Lisbon Treaty through the House of Lords will recognize the skills and abilities that she has. And I think she's also demonstrated those skills and abilities through her work as Trade Commissioner in the European Commission over the last year, where I understand her work has been very well received and she has worked extremely well with colleagues there, which I assume is why she has emerged as, a, as the uh, person who's got this post today. Nigel Farage, whatever you think of today's appointments, it does not look as if we're on the way to a European superstate, does it? Well, I mean, the Constitutional Treaty was designed to do two things. Firstly, to create a full political union, a state of the European Union, and secondly, to project itself on the global stage. Now, we've got the, we've got the appointment of two political pygmies. Uh, I mean, who is better known? Herman Van Rompuy or Baroness Ashton? It was interesting that uh, when Gordon Brown was talking about her appointment, he, in fact, himself couldn't even pronounce her name well, correctly. Well, you're sort so of making my point for me, really. You, this would not be the way that you would go to yeah, create so, this so, great so, power, so, would no, it? The, the point I'm making is that in terms of a global voice, the European Union will now be much derided by the rest of the world, but in terms of creating the political union, they've got this constitutional treaty through, and they will go on taking power away from national governments within the European Union. So, it's a mixed bag. Baroness Quinn, it's a mixed bag. I'm not sure how much of this you can hear, but this, is, this just shows that we're going to have a very small voice as a European Union on the world stage. No, I don't accept that. I think that the people, however, who've been chosen this evening very much reflect the roles of both the President and the High Representative of Foreign Policy as outlined in the Lisbon Treaty. If you read the treaty, it says very much that these roles are about articulating the already agreed policies at European Union level. And in that sense, Nigel Farage's claims about superstates simply don't hold water because it's, it's very clear that uh, these people have to articulate what the member governments collectively have, have agreed. And having been a minister in European councils, I know that the European Union proceeds often slowly, but always by consensus and agreement. And it is the elected governments who agree on particular lines of policy, which are then taken forward by commissioners and by high representatives. N Nigel Farage, I mean, a lot of people will see it as this is, you know, Angela Merkel and Nicolas Sarkozy saying, we want a chairperson or chairman or chairwoman, but we don't want anybody who's going to diminish our status. This remains well, a union of sovereign states. No, 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 no. It is not a union of sovereign states. This treaty ended that. But the big decision here was whether they chose global players to project a global voice or whether people like Mr. Sarkozy himself remain big players on the world stage. So there's been a collective loss of nerve in, in the sense of projecting themselves overseas. But can I just come back to Baroness Ashton? You know, let's just remember that apart from working for CND and working for a couple of quangos, she's had no experience in politics, she's not been elected, she was put in the House of Lords, I guess because she was married to Tony Blair's favourite pollster, and she managed to get the Lisbon Treaty through, crushing the amendments that would have given the British people a referendum, and this is her reward. And what a contrast this is, that this, this very cosy political class that has grown up, especially under New Labour, versus the millions of people in Britain that want to have a say on this matter. Uh, I think the let, whole thing's a disgrace. Well, let really me do. bring in Joyce Quinn on that, because the big point is, and it's not just confined to Britain, one of the things many people dislike about the European Union is the fact that we don't seem to have very much of a say in it, and that goes for the voters of France or Germany or anywhere else. I don't think that uh, Nigel Farage could have followed at all the debates that we had in the House of Lords where Baroness Ashton led so ably for the government on the Lisbon Treaty. In fact, I've been in Parliament 20 years and I thought that the best speeches on Europe that I'd ever heard were made by Cathy Ashton during those debates. She showed a knowledge of the European Union as a whole and also an impressive mastery of the details of a long and complicated treaty.
Nigel Farage, is the implication of what you were saying that even though we know you despise the treaty, but would you rather have Tony Blair as the president of Europe? No, but if I was, if I was somebody who believed in the European Union, um, that I would want not just a full political union, I would have wanted it to have had a voice on the world stage, and if I'd been, you know, the head of a European state that believed in the project, I would have chosen Tony Blair, because whatever his faults, he would have projected it on the global stage. Goodness me, we've never heard of these two characters. I mean, it's an absolute farce. So we're, so we're going to finish up with a European Union that has a diminished influence across the rest of the world and yet continues to take away democracy from national governments and continues to tie us up with a rule book that makes our economies uncompetitive. Joyce, so it's actually, in many ways, okay. it's the worst of all worlds. Joyce Quinn, situation. would you have rather had Tony Blair as the President of Europe? Uh, I actually think that uh, the role is one that Tony Blair could have carried out very well, but I don't think that it should be confused with the kind of role that he had as Prime Minister in Britain, where he was head of a majority government and could carry out policy which affected the country immediately. That's not the kind of role that's laid down in the European Treaty for the European President. Okay. I also think, by the way, though, that Nigel Farage is very damning unfairly of uh, the Belgian Prime Minister who has been chosen to undertake this role. Okay. Certainly reading the Belgian press, as I've done recently, it's very clear that he has very skillfully managed to uh, lead uh, Belgian politics okay. in what is often a very difficult situation. Well, well, so his skills as a negotiator we'll, should not be underestimated. We'll watch his skills unfold, no doubt, in the months to come. Thank you both very much.